when I was a graduate student. And it started an idea that I was thinking about, you know, about my dissertation. So I'm thinking a lot of times, you know, you see a book that falls on the floor and that could be a great idea for you. So anyway, that's one thought. So I know that Dr. Brahmi <laughs> has probably several <laughs> books falling on the floor. Um, I probably shouldn't do that. But anyway, uh, it was a good start anyway. Okay, um, go ahead, Sue Ellen. And by the way, this is very informal because uh, I'm kind of informal there. So don't worry about anything formal. Um, anyway, say out there, he's, I know he's pretty informal. And I see Jenny back here and Sean, several people. So good, good to see everybody. So if we look at the major goals of this presentation, um, I, I got it connected to Springer Publishing. Not sure how, but anyway, they like the university industry government uh, connection. So they thought it was very interesting that we're connected to the Pepperdine University PhD Global Leadership Program. So I thought that was interesting because um, I hadn't really thought about that, but they asked me to be one of the editors. So that was fun. And we have several people uh, from this group who have contributed. So I see several people on the line. The second thing is, I think we should focus on how we might look at university to university collaborations. And I'd like to look at two universities, University A versus B tonight. So I'm looking just mainly at two and it it's, uh, builds on the Etzioni uh, model that I'm talking about. I call it the UIG, University Industry and Government. So that's kind of the start to this. And the, three, the third thing is how might we might end with how we may look how to change models at the end and student interest. Um, and I think that causes motivation on change and interest in collaboration. So I know a lot of you are interested in uh, prior models and so we can discuss that a little bit at the end. So that's kind of the goals of the presentation. So, um, okay. So as I mentioned, um, I think it's a good opportunity that um, all of you may want to be get into the edit editors of handbooks and uh, looking at things that, that are put together by text. And I think that that's exciting uh, to start it. Now, Dr. Hyatt and I have ar argued about that, whether it's good to have a dead edited uh, text, but I think it's important uh, to, to put in as many publications as you can. You know, I know uh, Dr. Majidi mentioned there's 800 he was counting the other day. So <laughs> I'm sure there's quite, quite a few that we can add. And the date we are anticipating for this particular global leadership uh, publication is summer of 2023. So we're excited about this. And this is an edited product. So um, I think having an edited uh, book is good. And I noted that there are several of our students, faculty that are going to be published uh, in this volume. So we're very excited about this. So um, hope that we can maybe send out some free uh, copies. Uh, so you heard that, uh, Maria, remember, you know, you got, we're try they're kind of expensive, some of these books. So, you know, we're going to hoard them somewhere. <laughs> like, so uh, we're excited to looking at that. So, okay, next slide. slide. So what happened on the... Uh, the thinking about the global leadership, uh, it came from, uh, came a, from a show they had here at Pepperdine. It was called Waves of Innovation. And it was started out around 2014, 2014, 2015. But before that, I had around 2013, I, I kept seeing that what happened to global leadership? Um, how come we didn't have more publications and you know, maybe uh, more excitement in that. And what I began to see is more uh, Google uh, entries. So uh, what happened was I think they had 160 entries into this contest and I think they had eight. So I was excited that uh, they did accept uh, mine and it's called the Doctorate in Global Leadership. 
the PhD. And by the way, it was the eight. And remember, it didn't win anything at the time, but I'll tell you more about that. It's a proposal that the PhD in global leadership, uh, and they wanted to bring it to the Washington uh, DC Pepperdine University site. And they felt that this program will prepare some of Pepperdine's most intellectually curious and creative minds. And they thought that, wow, this is going to be tossed, taught by the most innovative research researchers and for high level faculty or industry positions at the best organizations and schools in the world. <laughs> they kept saying that they, they published this where they will help to usher a bold future. So that was that was the beginning in about 2013, 2013 to 14. So that was about the, the beginning. So I didn't know it was going, but I found out that uh, it was a contest. So I like to kind of uh, enter contests for some reason. So that was kind of fun for a while until I found out that there's 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 eight. I was competing evidently. I thought I didn't know it was that kind of a contest. So this is at Smothers um, Auditorium. So that was exciting. And part of this is, uh, as far as the global leadership, uh, Dr. Uh, Majidi and Dr. Helen Williams were, were very supportive. So one thing that I found is that if you want to get into different uh, programs, it makes, a, sometimes it's very difficult when you want to spread out a program that you really like. And so what I did is I took a lot of people to lunch in Pepperdine. Like I drive up to Malibu and say, does anyone want to go to lunch? You know, and that seems to work very well. So um, I was very surprised that Andrew Benton said, you know, I, I want to see what happens in this contest, June. So the PhD um, was approved February 23rd, 2016. Uh, Dr. Amiramontes and uh, Suelen De Maria for supporting the Global Leadership Initiative. And it actually su supports our speaker series, which I was very appreciative. So, uh, so it was exciting. Uh, we know that a lot of times start of origins like pictures. And um, this are, these are kind of pictures from a photo album the origins of Silicon Valley and universities A and B. And so what I thought, I lived near Sunnyvale and I, I did attend um, that long uh, tower there, the school there. And also you could see a picture of uh, Pepperdine on the right, beautiful campus that we have here. And the thing is, Steve Jobs uh, was an inspiration. He actually lived down the street. He uh, he was in a garage, you know, that was a story. And uh, so he was doing a lot of things that were happening in the garage, which I thought was interesting. I didn't know anything about the garage at the time, but evidently he became very well known, as you know. Um, also, uh, Wells Fargo was helping, uh, not really financially, but they did help the university. So you begin to see kind of a collection, you know, collection of people that are kind of thinking together. And the other thing is um, I had a job and I did, I had a job that no one knew exactly what it was, but it involved uh, burning chips. So you can see where you can see I have a silicone chip and I'm burning it. And I had no idea what I was doing, but evidently it paid, uh, you know, my part of it going to go to school. And also uh, Wells Fargo was also helping, but not, you know, they, they're kind of an industry, of course, but they were all around the area. But the main, the main thing I want to mention is if you look at the tower here, it wasn't just a tower. I learned that around it, there were many, many uh, buildings and businesses that were started. And this was exciting because you had Hewlett Packard you had a Melco semiconductor. Uh, you had all kinds of businesses. And that, to me, was one of the most exciting ideas that started around uh, that building right there. 
And so um, that that was the beginning of, you know, Steve Jobs was there and we had silicon chips and you had uh, business. So all those were together. Now it's not the same uh, today, I would say, because now there's some centers in Houston and different cities and you, you know, but that was the exciting part of it because that begins that UIG, that university, uh, you know, industry and um, uh, the, you know, the government. And part of it is the government. We don't talk about the government as much, but we know that there's grants and I wish there were more, you know, it's kind of be exciting if we had more grants, but I keep thinking that UIG was the way it was started. So, okay, so, uh, uh, let's see, Swellen, okay. So this led me into thinking about what are models of current alliances? And you can, you know this uh, more than I do here. Um, we have a university, uh, of course, Stanford Industry. That was, a, a, that was an alliance there. Um, of course, all of us go across the street and go to Starbucks as far as industry. So we had uh, industry there that was part of it. Uh, government, we had a lot of, we had grants uh, that was part of this also and grants. And also businesses target Walmart, uh, businesses which are bringing in alliances. And you, I'm sure you know that, for example, Starbucks, of course, uh, have alliances with other education orients, you know, oriented uh, businesses. So we have a lot of our students who are, of course, working with Starbucks and getting to go through school, and they have many grants and that type of thing, and why government's part of it. So you see it all together again, that, that model that I think is exciting, and I hope we do more of that. So uh, next. So this is kind of dedicated to Ian Mitroff, who um, I met with him um, and he supported a lot of the creative thinking that went to thinking about these uh, alliances. He contributed his time to faculty, staff, and students at Pepperdine. And so I really appreciate that, what he did. Uh, he also is the author of uh, a lot of the books on COVID. And so he's got about 34 books that he uses. And so he's been very supportive. And to the authors of the Triple Helix. And so that's really the name of the, the original book that was on there. Uh, and that was put out by Exkowitz and Chunyan Zhao. So that was one of the origins of the thinking of um, the books that were, you know, that really supported this idea. And I'd like to also thank the editors of the Handbook of Global Leadership and Followership uh, that recently was, that was published by Spence, uh, Springer Publishing and uh, contributing to that is Satinder Deman. And he's from the School of Business Woodbury uh, and Burbank and Joan Marquez, uh, School of Business also from Woodbury, Abetros Malaikin, Robert Morris, uh, also, from Pepperdine University, we have um, Charles Gross, Farzine, uh, Majidi, Gabriela Miramonte, Sade Onadeke, and of course, uh, Eric Shockman, Sonia Sharifafard, and Amanda Wickramasinghe. So these are, I'm sure that uh, there's some that I have left out because I know a lot of people started to contribute, and I, I really appreciated that. And um, so... Yeah, hi, there you go, Sonia. She contributed quite a bit. I think I had, I think I left someone back. Do you want to go back, Sue Ellen, a second? Okay. Oh, okay, that's all right. I'm looking at uh, advancing new knowledge. So uh, all those contributors really help. So I'm not going to review each one of these parts of these, but I do want to mention um, the UIG model, which I think I'm excited about. Um, the short history, history of uh, successful, we mentioned about collaborations, and I saw Sean here who is into collaborations. Also, what is global leadership, of course, and I know that all of you are uh, global thinkers. 
The other thing is I started, um, not started, but part of it is the Schmieder Global Mindset Inventory. So that's that's ongoing right now. So that's exciting because there's, we just started it and it got kind of uh, got going there. And it's just 50 items and you can just, you know, see how are you doing on the 50? It's, it's not a huge thing, it is validated. Uh, and it has, does this relate to possible collaborations? Um, so I think there's excitement about new knowledge and any time that we could collaborate, like we have an industry, we have a university here in West LA, you know, how much are we, you know, collaborating around about with professors who we haven't met yet? So I think that part, part is exciting. So I do want to mention a little bit what happened to 2013 and the presentation 2014. And we know that that kind of triggered what's happening today. And how is this idea supported by one university? And we have a lot of things about change theories, which you already know. So I'm not going to probably go through a whole lot about that. Uh, and I, I hope that we can support the model of university to university collaborations. And how might that be having a global focus? Um, the other thing is, the other university I'll mention is in Belize, of course, and the university here would be uh, from Pepperdine. So um, I do want to mention at the end towards that there are about six recommendations for best practices for designing and implementing successful university university alliances. And how might two universities get uh, get incentives. So we know that sometimes those collaboratives don't, they don't work, but sometimes, most of the time they do. And how we can all kind of have further steps to further global leadership activity. And uh, even increase, you know, I know a lot of people now are, a lot of students and faculty are, are really publishing for globally oriented journals. Um, we have the Journal of Global Leadership and other possible journals. So I know there's a lot, AERA is going on now, will be going on, uh, ILA. So that's exciting also, so, okay. So I mentioned a little bit about the purpose. Um, I just wanted to mention the background of the triple, what, what they tell me is the triple helix model, which was really the, the support of this particular um, presentation. So uh, that's the book that really started uh, the thinking. And the special attention was the university to university. So it's a little bit different from their logic model, which is UIG, which is university, industry, and uh, government. So, and it was first uh, put out, as I mentioned, uh, Etzkowitz and Le Desforf. The text associated for the model is, and it's called the triple uh, helix. So that I think that's the, just the total the name of the uh, text. If you want to uh, pick it up, it's in uh, paperback right now, and it really is a laboratory, and it could be you know the foundation for knowledge-based economic development and other things. So, okay, so um, this is. Uh, the feeling, the uh, graphic that pretty much uh, shows the university, industry, and government, and um, is pretty, you know, simple, of course. And of course, uh, we think that the university is encompassing, but we know that it in, involves industry, you know, grants and things like that, uh, and also it is tied to the government section too. And all of you may be familiar with Eric, uh, of course, Eric Hamilton does a lot as far as grants and government, and he works with the classes on, on using that area. So um, these are all tied to me. I can't even even look at them separate. You know, to me, they have to look, they have to be together. So that's exciting to me, even seeing this grant. So uh, that's, that's uh, how we, we're looking at it. So. Okay, so we know that the uh, successful collaborations, of course, Silicon Valley, we know 
uh, the Apple uh, collaboration, and also I mentioned the Silicon Valley um, chips. I mentioned those because I was learning about how those wor uh, chips uh, worked, and I'm sure a lot of people know a lot, you know, what they are, but I didn't realize at the time when I was uh, baking them uh, in Silicon Valley in a, you know, as a, as a graduate school, what they really meant and what they meant in industry. So, uh, well, just an aside, I think I broke a few of those accidentally. I hope I, no one ever says anything, but uh, sometimes you have to experiment is all I can say on that. So, okay. So a short history of uh, successful collaborations. Uh, we had uh, Terman from Stanford, Hewlett, Packard. Um, he was actually hired in uh, 1927, and he really did a lot of the university, the work in the university uh, in labs. Uh, Kyle Woman from Industry Overflow is the name of the industry, works with Silicon Valley colleagues right now. And you might check out some of the couple of references, and I think, um, uh, let's see, uh, Suellen mentioned those. So we'll have that in the, uh, you know, the chat or where you, you know, uh, distribute those. So, okay. So um, definition of global leadership. Uh, I think a lot of leadership definitions and uh, a lot of my colleagues talk about management of self. And I do think you have to know yourself first before you become a leader. Uh, in that what we're saying that leadership is really not dependent upon one leader. And um, in fact, uh, I had a, a professor who said to me, you know, June, uh, let's see, the, I don't even know what leadership means. And he's was worked in that area for about 30 years, I think. So it's a very a complex, com you know, area to look at. So. There's not, to me, there's no one definition. Uh, I, I have utilized the Mendenhall um, text, which I think is very good. And uh, I know that uh, uh, Jenny Walker is uh, associated with Javadon. And so we know the authors that are really in, interested in those topics. So I might mention the, uh, the global mindset uh, inventory. <laughs> um, as I mentioned, uh, there are questions on it right now, and it's got uh, Survey Monkey, and here's the code if you want to use it, and it's uh, free, no charge, and you can kind of see where you are, but it's uh, uh, no problem. It's F V R Z or seven Z F G. So uh, you can. If you want to go ahead and do that later or something, that'd be fun. It's kind of a fun inventory, but we know every one inventory is not going to say everything about global leadership. So uh, anyway, it's it's kind of a fun thing to start with anyway. Okay, next. So the present uh, university systems uh, are interesting. Um, uh, the one that they keep uh, mentioned uh, a lot is in 1088 University of Bologna. Uh, and typically, as we all know, there's usually a president, uh, board of trustees, the faculty, the students. And I think globally, the structure varies, of course. Uh, there might be combination, of course, in different uh, emphases on teaching versus research or combination. So. Um, you know, I've seen in different ways, and uh, so that's kind of like the the background of, of what has been in history, and uh, so we're in, I think we're in a typically kind of a new way, wave right now, so we, we, there's probably more a lot we can talk about on that one, so next. So we also now have, of course, more online programs that are global. We have Coursera, of course, um, when we have tremendous, interesting to me how you can have a courses that has an online enrollment of, of thousands of students. So you have a lot of high volume and you've gotten into Udacity and Coursera. 
uh, MITs, you know, involved in that, of course, many, many uh, colleges and universities where you have recorded lectures, of course, 15 minute lectures with quizzes. And we're talking about, we're talking about worldwide and leadership of Coursera, Udacity, edX, and all those. So I just want to keep those in the background that we have kind of the feeling that there's a lot of, of course, online programs that are global. Okay, next. So I want to transition to thinking about two universities. We have University A, which is a small sized university locating it, located in Central America. And so we selected kind of one event that was kind of of interest. University B is located in California. So we're just going A and B right now. So we're typically not gonna say uh, which exactly they are. But so if we look at what happened at A, they have five universities merged into University A. And so it's an under-resourced uh, uh, a country, we know that. We know that both universities have their board overseeing the organization. A was a merged, uh, recreated, by, created by a merger from five institutions. And we know they, they went together in Central America because they needed more resources. That was the reason they did that. So the major part of that university, um, we have a technical college, we have a teacher's training college, a nursing college, and a college of agriculture. And so you can see, we know in Central America that, um, of course, that's what we're looking at, especially the agriculture part. Nursing became part of, the, part of it. We also know and that's okay that we can go ahead with this one, but uh, yeah, that's great. But um, uh, what happened is we know that mergers don't always always uh, work. And we also know that we have students that may leave the school uh, at eighth grade, you know, that to me, that's a very unusual maybe, or sixth grade. We have to look at certain grade levels. So we're looking at in Central America where we don't have a full, what we see as Western, uh, a full education platform. And for sometimes you'll see people in restaurants say, well, can we contribute to your education? You know, or they'll do, uh, you know, we have students that have brought down books and, you know, uh, publications to help the students, to work with the students down there. Uh, so in um, Belize. So that, that's exciting, I think. So anyway, how did the uh, idea start in University B, Los Angeles? Well, it did start with an event called Waves of Innovation. So this is kind of exciting. Uh, I don't know who started, but we, uh, I submitted a, uh, an idea that we put together a PhD. Uh, so I thought that would be interesting. <laughs> so... <laughs> Little did I know, or, so, but it did end up to one of the finalists, believe it or not, which is exciting. So it began with administrators, faculty, and students, which I think is exciting, connecting to help present new ideas uh, or building on current ones. And let me just mention some of the current ideas they had. Uh, one of the students wanted to build a green part of their dormitory so that, uh, part that was one of the contestants. And then we have one contestant who wanted to have a ship uh, that would be out, of course, um, outside maybe Malibu, but in the, you know, way out in, in the, you know, salt water. He, he wanted to have it populated by students, maybe 20, and they would be kind of sailing and, you know, look at different things uh, while they're talking about theories and uh, that was an exciting idea. Then we had uh, one of the contest contestants wanted to do a like a little um, mini, uh, shall I say it, like groups. In other words, they would meet for coffee or, you know, uh, dinner, uh, maybe four or five students and, you know, they, you know, present uh, their ideas. So that was kind of interesting. So these are the finalists here. Uh, as the finalist, so that was exciting. So we'll see what happened. Next. Uh, so some of the, this University B, uh, 
we had the small uh, number of presenters were selected or much deliberation and they presented their ideas to a large audience which actually was connected uh, and they had buses that were busted bust in to Malibu there was a panel of judges who selected who would be the finalists so we weren't unaware of who were the finalists uh, we had you know we did and I had no idea and then uh, the ideas were then disseminated to a larger an audience for discussion. And so uh, some of the ideas actually was exciting because they were adopted by a wider audience after the event. So this, this is kind of exciting. Okay, next. So a university B, the event was from Central America and we had other, uh, global leader and leadership uh, activities that was adopted by University B. And I mentioned they had agriculture and that types of thing. The other thing they, they stressed was also tourism, which is interesting. When they went into tourism, they actually brought monies into the uh, country because then that, uh, that enabled kind of micro uh, starting students to start their micro businesses, which which really built. So that kind of was kind of a seed monies for the students. So that was part of part of Central America, uh, Honduras and Belize. And that our students actually visited uh, some of these uh, groups and the people who were setting up the ideas. OK. So I just wanted to mention also that during um, the, uh, the the, the, the actual presentation from Waves of Innovation, I actually uh, lost uh, the context, which was not bad, because uh, I actually uh, got a contribution from the president of Pepperdine. Uh, as I was walking out of the uh, auditorium, I saw my iPhone and it lit up. And he said just uh, three words. He said, bring this back. Uh oh, four words. Okay, four words. Bring this back, June. I want to see this. And from then, then it started to get into more ideas. So that was exciting. So um, we're saying uh, this is uh, about the fact that motivation is in, uh, employment, income related. This is um, if you ever get a chance, uh, Craig. Robert Gray Craig uh, has a lot of things about uh, looking at recessions and looking at uh, in unemployment and some other issues. So uh, he'd be a very good uh, person to talk to about uh, possible uh, future. OK. So um, what might be supporting activities for university university collaborations? Well, one is might be more partnerships. Uh, we might want to have universities may want to collaborate with others, uh, maybe more structured student to student experiences, both in the United States and Central America. Uh, so those, those activities might be exciting. OK, next. And here's uh, six recommendations uh, for uh, best practices for designing and implementing successful university, university alliances. Um, number one was the power of institutional control, control of higher education will decrease, they think. You know, this, these are predictions, so we can't say what's going to happen. But you have to have the consumer will try to exert more control over the products of higher education. I think you see that now to, to a great extent. So two, of course, you have more mobile uh, digital access and convenience now, number two. Three, now this is, of course, controversial a little bit. The current model of higher education based on time, uh, of course, will be reviewed. And I think WASC is even looking that, at that a lot now and will change to a more outcome oriented model. I mean, that's something that uh, has been debated, of course. And so that's looked talked at now. And I think there's going to be more attention to university, university model of collaboration. So I think that's exciting. And the structure uh, of universities considering other systems, in other words, so such as all hybrid, 
Now we're looking, of course, all hybrid, or of course, people said all, maybe we go all face-to-face. -face. We know certain universities, are, of course, going all face-to-face. -face. And I think a lot of different, um, you know, vehicles are looking at, are looking at that. And the, the last one is the importance of discussing at all levels. We have areas that can be part looked at uh, what we want to look in the future, food security, public health, uh, climate change are also important issues. And also looking at nonprofit mode, so, okay. So um, let's think, I just have a few minutes here. Um, so I think there's some questions we want to look at. We might want to look at two universities that further their collaboration. Uh, we looked at Central America, one from the United States. We have uh, collaborations with Central America and also the United States. And you might want to think about why university university may not work. We do know that a couple uh, universities it did not work. They, they, it wasn't a good uh, fit. So the one in Central America, so they, they went, they changed the universities and one actually said, we decided to stay with the university where we're going to stay with and not have another collaboration. So next. So um, probably want to go too much in this. You're aware of, uh, you know, SpaceX, um, GE, of course, United Nations. You know, Eric uh, Schachman works a lot about, about the uh, collaboration uh, of uh, United Nations. Uh, we know in Amazon, uh, we have students actually, of course, we know they're working in Amazon right now. That's, that's grown a little bit more and they're doing a lot of collaboration there. We have many students that are on Google or in Google. We've had a little bit of uh, layoffs in Amazon, as you may know. So we're, you know, looking at that, you know, uh, but I think that may have been put, uh, I'm not sure where that was set up in advance or, you know, that work, but, you know, I think that's going to change. Uh, so, okay. Okay. Yeah, this is going to be part of the slides that we're looking at assessing competencies. We mentioned about the, um, I have a competency list. I know that uh, Jenny uh, has, um, Walker has uh, other competency lists. I know organizational problems. Uh, you all know that uh, DEI, uh, mission, vision and values. You know, we have uh, adjunct professors that we have more that are coming in now and uh, we talk about CCCSR. Um, all, many of you might be familiar, familiar with the CCAI inventory. So there's all kinds of inventories out there that are uh, used that you could use. Uh, so uh, we have uh, inventories that expats use. So that's kind of interesting, different uh, inventories. Okay. Yeah, let me go to the next one because uh, I think we're kind of reading. Yeah, so we might want to uh, talk about an actual uh, case. We had tried to, uh, we put in computers into Belize for the last seven years. And this is exciting because we can see that uh, a lot of people benefit for those computers. So we're very excited at that, okay. And um, I always think about uh, Laura. Uh, Laura uh, brought a computer, she got a computer and I mean, it's amazing uh, what she can do. She left where she's working now and she's a, a tech, of course, now in Placentia, Belize. So we hope to see how she's doing. So we're very excited about what she did. So she's got several computers. Um, this is, uh, what happened many years, a few, few years ago when we started uh, the, um, the Belize and Los Angeles tie-in. So we had a lot of people uh, that were near the beach there who got uh, excited. They have computers there and um, that was exciting, that part to get you know students really excited about, hear about new, new ideas, okay? 
So I've just mentioned a couple of theoretical models, uh, shines. I like the process cons consultation. I like Seng I actually I like Senge quite a bit because uh, he he of course has used other models, but he looks at system thinking, and that's something that I really think is exciting. So we we're that's what I'm we're really looking at with UIG model is the system. So okay. And this was used um, for uh, more of a nonprofit uh, area that we had, uh, that we still have actually, where we have the journal. So we're, we're going to be losing that, but that, that is, uh, we actually use that in the global leadership conference that we have in, in Belize. Okay. So we look at, people issues and uh, systems, governance. I think that many of you are familiar with these. So um, probably we know that uh, both are important training programs, formal education. So I just put that in the slide. So kind of a, just to keep track with that. Yes, go ahead. Uh, we all know about the whole system changes that we have project-based change model and there's overlapping to that in ORI, recognizing critical nature of individual employees. I think it's important to know the, uh, you know, the rational, uh, technical uh, and personal, uh, ab, you know, issues of change. And so those are things that we put into the academic catalog. So that I think that's important, okay? And all of you, many of you, all of you know the organizational theories, adult, I especially like the adult learning theory because I think it relates to actually students go to different uh, countries and uh, I think that makes a big difference. So, and so, next. So I thought there might be, if we look at global issues, there's a few uh, texts that you might be interested in, the great upheaval uh, by Arthur Levine, Scott Van Pelt. Uh, we invited Ryan Craig here at Pepperdine. He did a great presentation a couple of years ago. Uh, he, I think he lives uh, near Malibu uh, and he, he's, uh, he's really thought future, what should be happening in change. And of course he thinks about disruptions. We can all think about disruptions, especially in digital technology. Um, impact of outcomes and learning, competency-based education. So these are kind of looking at the future, okay? In conclusion, um, I think it has been important to have building on university to university collaborations, and that's exciting. Also building on global leadership goals and work, uh, and also especially the work that we can of course, our authors, and these are the three models we're looking at, stilling and looking the future. So with that, I'm going to thank you and thank you for your time. Appreciate it. Thank you, Dr. June. And thank you. Uh, thank, you for, thank you very much. Uh, now, if that's okay with you, we can open sure. the floor for questions. Sure. Shaletta, I wasn't following the chat. Do we have any questions or comment? No? Okay. No. So feel free no. to unmute yourself or raise your, raise your hand and ask your questions. Okay. Oh, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Do we have anyone who's really interested in global leadership? <laughs> <The future? laughs> How about you, Al? <laughs> you must have. Uh, oh my you. God! <laughs> of course. <laughs> oh, okay. Do we, need, we, need, we need global leadership. This is for sure because uh, when I understand, because when we were talking about the universities, mm -hmm. you meant global universities. You you said the universities in Central America. Mm -hmm. Uh, university in uh, California, sure. and collaboration between two. You mean the global collaboration of those universities, right? Uh, yes, 
Yeah, that is uh, actually we have now sister universities. Oh, okay. Uh, I mean, not maybe not. I'm sure Pepperdine also has. Uh, Pepperdine is a university in the United States in California. Mm -hmm. yeah, another university in Tokyo, Japan. Oh, and okay. Other ends, I'm giving an example. Okay. And there are many instances like that, and then they collaborate. They, you know, my mm -hmm. daughter was an uh, uh, exchange student in Tokyo. Oh, great. Okay. Yeah. This man, uh, she just came back. But the thing is, because of the, those, my daughter's university and the University of Tokyo, they were sister universities. Mm -hmm. They were collaborating. And yeah. one student came from Tokyo University to the United States. And mm -hmm. one student, there are many students, like one student, my daughter, went to Tokyo. So exchange students or oh. because of the collaboration of the universities. Mm -hmm. And it's great. I mean, it is not, you are not to change, exchanging the culture. Mm -hmm. So you are also uh, introducing different cultures to that students. Now, my daughter learned Japanese culture. Oh, now, okay. Oh, that's experience. terrific. And oh, that, that student from Japan now knows that uh, the American culture, then they are going to go back and they are also going to introduce their experiences to uh -huh. their families, their friends, and they are going Oh, to great. So oh. this is good. I mean, this is a, a, this is a, a global level. And yeah. the other thing you mentioned, the, yeah, it's a, certainly the universities, industry, uh -huh. and government. It's a yeah. simple, keep it simple, keep it simple and effective model. So what the uh, uh, collaboration, because what I noticed that the collaboration between Pepperdine is not that strong with the government, but the mostly industry. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. I see what you're saying. Yeah. Ah. Have, yeah, a lot of collaboration with government, Pepperdine. And if we talk mm -hmm. about our program, mm -hmm. And uh, not lack of collaboration, but we have strong collaboration with the industry. That's for yes. sure, and also I... the academia. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, that is uh, that is uh, uh, for sure. We can improve that collaboration between uh, Pepperdine and the uh, government. And I mm -hmm. guess it is just the. Uh, uh, Communicating with government agencies uh, and then mm -hmm. send them a Pepperdine official letter. Hey, we have that kind of program. And uh, we are Department of Treasury, let's say. Right. Uh, yeah, that, that is the, yeah, I'm sure your Department of Treasury uh, uh, you know, concern about the future leadership. And we have that kind of program. Uh, if you want, you be mm -hmm. my guest, come and Sure. Introduce the program, give them presentation, have lunch, and oh. make a tour and have a beautiful campus. Malibu, also we have the LA, it's a nice location. I mean, uh, this is, uh, I guess, need communication uh, official level between Pepperdine and government agencies. Yes, uh -huh. that's uh, exactly then, right. Yeah, uh, not only the industry, also government needs uh, leaders. Right. Uh, yeah, that is that is very important, I believe. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's it. Thank you. I think you know you brought up point, and Lena's. Uh, I've got her her uh, hand raised, but the, we have to. It you know it started out with the innovation um, waves of innovation was just having lunch, you know, which was interesting because having lunch with several of the faculty from different schools probably started things that I didn't even realize. And uh, and I didn't even know that, like from, you know, even from Seaver, uh, when I met them, you know, that was exciting because I, the, 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 the cooperation and people wanted to have different programs, that that was exciting, I thought. And frankly, because all of you sitting here, many of you, that's what, that's what happened from 2000, you know, 2015, which I think is very exciting. So that to me was exciting to finally get something going. Now I know the only reason, well, one of the reasons was someone said, yes, let's get this going. So you have to have resources, that's for sure. And you brought up that point uh, out about that. You have to have resources. Uh, so I grants, large grants too, you, get, you know, hundreds of thousands started 
you know, to an idea. You have to have that going. So, okay, Lena, you yes. want to go ahead? Thank you, Dr. Schweider. Thank you so much for this uh, presentation. It's great seeing you tonight, seeing okay. everyone. Uh, so my question is about any, do you have, is there any uh, potential thoughts or maybe plans down the road uh, in terms of collaborating with Middle Eastern universities? Ah, okay, Middle Eastern, all right. Just, uh, do you have any, yeah. Okay, with Saudi Arabia is what you would partly, that would be part of it, right? Is what, when you say Middle Eastern, how, what would you say would be part of that? Uh, yeah, Middle Eastern would, would, would mean maybe uh, UAE, uh, I don't know, uh, um, uh, Lebanon is a small country, but it's uh, really um, uh, moving forward in terms of education mm -hmm. and higher education, and I can testify for, on that oh. as, as a Lebanese. Oh, great. Uh, so yeah, maybe mm -hmm. several countries other, of course, mm -hmm. Saudi Arabia is included, but uh, mm -hmm. Other other countries. Other well. countries. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, it's because of uh, probably most of my efforts have been, you know, connected with uh, the PhD in global leadership. But you're right. Lebanon would be exciting, I think, as a collaboration with as far as UAE also. Uh, one thing I did do is I went to Saudi Arabia. Uh, and um, I asked to maybe there's some way to collaboration there. Um, I'm not sure that was excited, that was received as well, uh, but uh, maybe that would happen eventually. One thing I did find is that our students there, uh, like for example, Ahmed Garatli, uh, he leads a group in Saudi Arabia and he would be very you know, excited about maybe in this collaboration. Uh, so that that part was exciting. So, uh, but I would like to know more about Lebanon. That's a great idea, and I think we should have more collaborations on that area. Thank you. Sure. Thank you, Doctor. Sure. Thank you for your question. We we have one student from Lebanon. Uh, you do? Uh, oh. Yeah, in my court, Mira. Her name is Mira. Oh, Mira. Uh, Mira Fidel. Mira Fidel. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. Uh huh. Mira Fidel. Yes. Yes. Yeah, she yeah she's uh, very excited uh, in in the program. Uh, enjoyed talking with her, so that was exciting. Um, to June, we have yes. uh, Sean has his hand uh, uh, up. Do we have time for one more question? One last question. Oh sure. And before we do that, I was wondering. I want everyone to collaborate with another university. <laughs> It doesn't even matter which one. <laughs> I mean, we could send you, you can go to Malibu. I know Maria, Marie's ready to do that. Uh, she's, <laughs> I, I know we have great collaborations, I just want to say, but uh, I would love to see a lot more. So, okay, Sean, I know what you're going to talk about. <laughs> go ahead. I'm sorry. All right. Sean, you are muted. Do you want to okay. unmute yourself and ask your question? Oh, he is joining us again. Yeah. Oh, okay. I it's just want to say, okay, maybe you might want to rejoin. I do know a little bit what Sean is going to talk about, I think. So I can, because <laughs> I think I read one of, where did, read his paper. Oh, can I, do I see you, Sean? You were guessing my question already? Do okay, I, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you, I didn't know who you were there, so I was going to. No, go ahead. I want to hear what your question is. I, I was going to uh, say and then ask, I've noticed in partnership with industry, it's much easier to get the partnership formed than to make it successful. It's two separate things. One step's getting assigned. Next is make it successful. What have you found in university to university that once it's already signed in a uh, partnership, what makes it successful or what hinders it? What are those two things? So once it's already a partnership, what have you found that makes them successful after that? Or what have you found have been hindrances to make it inhibitors to success? Okay, that's very, I like that. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll take an example, a University of Belize. Okay. What made it successful is uh, it had, um, it, it had a good leader leadership there. 
because they wanted to bring uh, different uh, like schools together and they had to design, you know. So they actually, they didn't have that much money, but they had to design, they had thinking as you, you have systems thinking. So they had a great leader and they still do uh, uh, that was leading that college. Now what think, things that hindered um, a, a, a very similar university was next, next door called Ferris State. And Ferris State didn't have the same um, leadership and it had uh, too much, uh, it was coming out of the states. It was, uh, I think that uh, some, the, the universities in Belize didn't feel it was a good uh, fit. So I think that the fit was a hindered, hindered, hindrance there. So I think that was important there. So, so I hope I answered your question. Uh, right. Sean, you know uh, what makes a, a co good collaboration. Give me an idea what would be a, a good collaboration of two uni universities. Just to- well, yeah. No, I joined this call to hear from the expert. I just want to listen and learn. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. I read your paper, Sean. Um, okay. I, you're an expert in this area, you know, thank you. So thank right. you. No, you really do. The, what do you think is a hindrance? Uh, Cause that, maybe this is our last, uh, my last question. What would be your hindrance to a uh, co good collaboration of two universities? Yeah. I've not done that yet. If it was gonna be industry, I could say what I've experienced with some of the companies is sometimes yeah. when there's turnover and those that had the buy-in initially then move on. Now the new people have had trouble getting them onboarded with the same vision. Yeah. I've experienced that. That could be one thing. Yes, that is excellent. Thank you. See, I want to turn this around to you, so because uh, I know that you, <laughs> you know you've read the paper. So this Great, has been you. fun. This has really been a lot of fun, by the way. I just want to say that. So thank you, Gabby. Thank and you, Ellen. Thank you for this. This is thank fantastic. you, Dr. June. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you, Dr. June. Yes, thank you, everyone, day. for attending very today. Fun. I posted the link for our next sessions uh, in the chat. So feel free to join us. Uh, it would be a pleasure to have you all. We have Dr. Shockman and also Dr. Jenny Walker, who is uh, always uh, also mm -hmm. here today. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Dr. Thank Jenny, you. again. You take Good care. Evening. Bye bye. Thank you. Take care. Bye bye. Bye bye. I just wanted to thank all of you. I appreciate your time.